Hey everyone, it's Jeff from New York, and today we're going to talk about Greenwich Village, a neighborhood that's located in between Lower Manhattan and Midtown Manhattan. Uh, it's bordered by Broadway to the east, the Hudson River to the west, Houston Street to the south, and 14th Street to the north. Smack dab in the middle of Greenwich Village is New York University, or NYU, as well as Washington Square Park. Just a few decades ago, Greenwich Village was known as the Artist's Haven, or a bohemian capital, the cradle of the modern LGBT movement, and the East Coast birthplace of both the Beat and the 60s counterculture movements. Some of the areas surrounding Greenwich Village are the East Village, the West Village, NoHo, SoHo, Hudson Square, Chelsea, and Union Square. So let's start this trip off through the village with a trip to Washington Square Park. This park is always adapted to meet the needs of the community throughout the years. It serves as a cemetery, a parade ground, a gathering spot for avant-garde artists, a battleground for chess enthusiasts, and a playground for children and dogs. The Marble Arch, which the park is famous for, was dedicated in 1895 and honors George Washington, the man for whom the park is named. Many people ask which came first, the arch or the fountain? The fountain, a well-known meeting place in the village, predates the arch by 43 years. This was a beautiful day in the park to just walk around and enjoy the sights and sounds. Lots of children and dogs today, as well as students. The park is pretty much located in the heart of NYU's campus, so there's always an abundance of students here. It's kind of like the campus square. You can always find students sitting on the grass or on benches or around the fountain, either studying or picnicking or just enjoying the sunshine. This monument located in the middle of the park is of Giuseppe Garibaldi, who had an international reputation as a military leader. He was even asked by President Abraham Lincoln to command the Union Army during the Civil War, but he declined so that he can continue to fight for the United Italian Nation. The statue was dedicated in 1888, six years after Garibaldi's death. In the 1960s, a good luck ritual developed among NYU's finance students in which each new student in the School of Finance tossed a penny at the base of Garibaldi's monument at the start of the school year. The ritual still continues. So if you're in the area the first week of September and you need some spare change, you now know where to look. Another monument in the park is that of Alexander Lyman Holly, who was an engineer who changed America and the rest of the world. With several patents, books, and hundreds of articles under his belt, he went on to find a way to manufacture steel quickly and cheaply, thus changing the future of America. Holly revolutionized the way many things were built, including railroads, bridges, and ships. The monument was dedicated in 1889. You know, every once in a while while walking through New York City, you see something and have to do a double take. It usually involves people, but today it involved a bench with a sign on it. A Marino is a gelato shop with a worldwide following. If you want to try their gelato in the U.S., you have to come to Greenwich Village. It's currently their only shop in the United States. Most people order two flavors and they scoop it into a cone to make it look like a flower. As you see here, mine was pistachio and vanilla and it was delicious. Van art or rolling art is found all around New York City. I found these two vans parked along Greenwich Village streets. This particular one looks like those scrubbing bubbles on steroids. This is Generation Records on, I believe, McDougal Street. It's right off the NYU campus. Where else would a store like this be? You could spend hours going through tons of CDs, DVDs, vinyl records, and other merchandise before you notice that the stairway leads to a basement with tons more. Definitely a must-stop if you have a list of hard-to-find music. St. Joseph's Church is located in Greenwich Village, and as the sign says, it's the oldest Catholic church edifice in Manhattan. The church was built in 1833 and dedicated in 1834. The first congregants were predominantly Irish American. Abington Square is an old park in Greenwich Village going way back to 1831. In 1921, 20,000 spectators gathered in and around this small park to see the dedication of the Abington Square Memorial scene here, also known as the Abington Doughboy, in memory of the local men who fought in World War I. This is the iconic Blue Note Jazz Club. It seems like this place has been around forever, but it only opened in 1981, and it's already become legendary. The Blue Note is one of the premier jazz clubs in the world. With adjectives like premier, legendary, and iconic, you know this place has got to be good. This is Otto Pizzeria, one of a couple restaurants owned by Mario Batali in Greenwich Village. He's stepped away from day-to-day -day operations since recent accusations of sexual misconduct, but Mario's had other bad news recently as well. 
This past summer, the restaurant announced that its credit card system has undergone a security breach, and customers who paid by credit card were potentially exposed to malware that sniped information such as credit card numbers, expiration dates, internal verification codes, and sometimes even the cardholders' names. Also this past summer, the Department of Health closed the restaurant for sanitary violations that included mice and roach infestations, as well as fruit flies, food out of temperature, and contaminated food. The restaurant opened several days later to what I'm sure was huge crowds. <clears throat> Kinky shops. These three shops are all on the same block within feet of each other in Greenwich Village. Kinky? Yes. All in good fun? Yes. All in good taste? Maybe. Seedy like old Times square? Absolutely not. These shops are all about fun and games and even if you're just browsing, they have all types of customers and everyone is welcome. It's very easy to separate the locals from out-of-towners, however, because New Yorkers simply don't blush. By the way, for you moms and dads who have kids attending NYU, these shops are located within steps of the campus. Do you know what your kids are up to tonight? All right, this is an example of very effective and inexpensive advertising. All you need is a box of chalk and some sidewalks. New York City has plenty of sidewalks. I started following the arrows from several blocks away and they led me to a cartoon festival. Lots of cool stuff on exhibit and for sale. Outside the cartoon artists were given large blank canvases, okay, white paper, to show off their talents. This is the perfect example of finding things to do in Manhattan. If you can't think of something to do, just take a walk and you'll come across some very interesting things every time. This establishment is simply called Groove. Yes, the food is good and the cocktails are even better. But this place is all about the music. Live music every night. Some of the best R&B, funk, and soul in the city. Check it out if you can. Also check out the groovy building art murals of music legends on the building's exterior. I found this garden off the NYU campus. Green Thumb is similar to other city organizations that take vacant lots and turn them into city gardens. Volunteers get plots which they are responsible to maintain. Getting your plot is not that easy. You have to earn it by becoming an apprentice to a current plot owner. The property also provides the four basic habitat elements needed for wildlife to thrive. Food, water, cover, and places to raise young. It has been certified by the National Wildlife Federation as an official backyard wildlife habitat site. Have a costume party with your significant other and don't know what to go as? Well, this is AA Halloween. It's a costume shop in the village, and this is their take on Ken and Barbie. I guess it's the place to shop if you want to get all dolled up. Just a few steps down from the sidewalk, and you'll find everything that has to do with comic books. This is the mysterious time machine, and even if collecting isn't your thing, I suggest you take a browse. Something will bring back memories. Dog runs are very popular in many Manhattan parks. This one happens to be in Washington Square. The dogs have a great time. Some dog runs separate large dogs from the smaller ones. Washington Square Park does not separate, yet all the dogs seem to get along fine. The dogs have many of the features found in children's playgrounds, including things to climb on and water features such as fountains and sprinklers so that they can drink and cool off. Every neighborhood in Manhattan has gourmet delis and Greenwich Village has its share as well. One of the best known is Citarella. With shops on the Upper West Side as well as the East Side, and a few in the Hamptons, Citarella clearly markets itself for the well-to-do. I'm less well-to-do and more down-to-earth. However, I do like to occasionally buy myself something nice or for someone else, and this is a great place just for that. Like every neighborhood, Manhattan has its share of hole-in-the-wall restaurants. Unlike other places, however, the borough, especially in Greenwich Village, has many hole-in-the-sidewalk restaurants as well. Piadina calls itself the rustic Italian hideaway, and they serve up authentic Italian food with an emphasis on pasta, meat, and fish. The eatery has gotten rave reviews from New York Magazine, as well as its patrons. The Village Alliance is a leading advocate for the Greenwich Village community. The organization organizes and reports on all types of village events. In the above photo, if you look at the banner, they're promoting shops along 8th Avenue. Their website includes places, events, deals, self-guided tours, and a blog. You should check it out. Patchen Place is known for a few things, but perhaps it's best known as one of the oldest streets in Manhattan. The gated cul-de-sac has 10 three-story row houses and was originally built for the staff of the nearby Brevoort House Hotel. Eventually, it became home to many famous writers. Today, it's a popular location for, of all things, psychotherapist offices. At last count, there are 35 residents and 15 therapist offices. With regards to that gas lamp all the way at the end of the alley, it's one of the last remaining in the entire city. 
It was changed to electric in the 1920s, however the lantern and its sanction are original. I walked right into a breast cancer rally during my visit to the village. These people were singing and cheering and chanting. There must have been a hundred of them marching for their noble cause. Coming soon, the Philip Burley Preschool of the Arts. For now, street art. This is the Bigelow Building in Greenwich Village. The building was erected in 1902 for Bigelow chemists. The building and the pharmacy are still going strong after all these years. This is the legendary Café Wa on McDougal Street in Greenwich Village. So many acts have gotten their start here, including Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, Bruce Springsteen, Woody Allen, Lenny Bruce, Bill Cosby, and Richard Pryor. Pages and pages have been written about this club, which pays its performers with a warm meal and perhaps the prospect of a huge future. So, dog services are a huge business in Manhattan, and if you want your rover trained, washed, walked, groomed, photographed, babysat, fixed, or have his teeth clean, there's someone around to take care of it for a price. This place is located in the village, and the ironwork caught my eye, not just the wrought iron gate, but the, the detailed ironwork along the building's walls. I'm not sure if it's original and the dog wash owner restored it, or if the owner put it up himself. Either way, he's a good boy. Grace Church is a beautiful church located in Greenwich Village and a National Historic Landmark that was built in 1846. When the church was built, they couldn't afford a marble steeple, so they had a wood one built. In 1883, the wood steeple was replaced with a much stronger marble one. That's almost 40 years after it was originally built. Today, this landmark stands strong and beautiful as ever. You've heard of Campus Commons. Well, this is the Campus Uncommons. A coffee shop catering to NYU students, but anyone's really welcome if you can find a seat. The cafe has tables, throw pillows, and walls lined with every board game imaginable, hundreds of them. Grab a friend or two and order some coffee and a nosh and then grab a game off the wall. Some of the games include Sorry, Candyland, Trouble, Battleship, Hungry Hippos, and tons of card games, just to name a few. And of course, if you have a lot of time on your hands, there's good old Monopoly. They also have weekly events, such as the Sunday My Little Pony Tournament. Meatball Obsession is home of Meatballs in a Cup, another popular hole-in-the-wall restaurant in the village. There's no chairs here or tables, just a window and some good food. In this case, it's a New York City favorite. Meatballs in a Cup. Who would have thought? Epicurean Market. There's lots of shops in Greenwich Village selling food and flowers, similar to this one, but this one's one of my favorites. Chess Forum is located right off the NYU campus, and the store not only sells everything to do with chess, and backgammon for that matter, but they have a back room where players can battle it out, and I've seen it. It's pretty intense. Manhattan is not just cement, glass, and steel. It's home to all types of trees, not just on the ground either, but on rooftops as well. I just happened to stumble across 12 Chairs Cafe. You know, fresh coffee and ingredients make for a great cafe, but with a name like 12 Chairs, I'd get there pretty early. This is Sullivan Street Teas and Spices, and the name says it all. Located on Sullivan Street, this shop sells all kinds of teas, spices, and more. They also have cool gift sets. Located in the heart of the village is Washington Square Hotel. The hotel started out as a small eight-story residential building in 1902. Over the years it has expanded, but it still remains a somewhat small hotel for Manhattan standards. Some of the guests over the years include Albert King, Ernest Hemingway, Bo Diddley, Chuck Berry, The Rolling Stones, The Ramones, Bob Dylan, Joan Baez. It's a favorite of many musicians and artists. Many continue to return here when in New York City. Fire Patrol 2 has not been active since 2006. Since then, the fate of the building has been tested. Because the area lacks landmark protections and zoning would allow for a much larger building, many thought the building would be torn down. Things looked worse when the owner put the building up for sale, leaving its future to anyone who purchased it. In 2010, the state of New York finally registered the building with the National Registers of Historic Places. And at the same time, the building was purchased by a local New Yorker who had no intention of destroying the building. In fact, it went through a total renovation with the assistance of an architect, and he turned the firehouse into a private residence. The exterior was not only left entirely intact, but it was impeccably restored. These days, when he's not traveling the world reporting or enjoying everything Manhattan has to offer, native New Yorker Anderson Cooper, of CNN fame, relaxes in his firehouse home, and appreciative friends of the city know a beautiful building is safe from destruction. By the way, Mr. Cooper has a pee for those who throw cigarette butts on his sidewalk, and I can't blame him. Just a heads up.
McDougall Street has been called the most colorful and magnetic venue for tourists on an evening out in the village. It's been the subject of many songs, poems, and other forms of artistic expression. Some of the artists who have roots here include William S. Burroughs, Miles Davis, Allen Ginsberg, Jackson Pollock, Dylan Thomas, Gore Vidal, E.E. E. Cummings, Ernest Hemingway, Eugene O'Neill, Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, Marlon Brando, Eartha Kitt, Henry Miller, and many, many more. The street is filled with cafes, clubs, and eclectic shops. Right off of the NYU campus, it's a hangout for students who are ready to let their hair down after studying. McDougal Street is a must visit if you're in the Greenwich Village area. This shop is Limpasse. French-born designer Abdul Sal has had this shop since 1996. Limpasse specializes in custom couture women's clothing, unique designs, and image consulting. While the storefront could use a little image consulting itself, the place is well known by celebrities in the music and movie industries. The Mineta Tavern opened in 1937 and was a favorite among many writers, poets, musicians, and artists. The place has recently been renovated and has been described as a Parisian steakhouse meets classic New York City tavern. Sounds like a yummy place to hang out. The Little Lebowski Shop. All things Lebowski, dude. If you've seen the movie, you could appreciate this store. And I tell you to check it out, but I think it's gone by the wayside since my visit to the village. Boy and Authentic Thai Restaurant Wine and Sake Bar. Very popular amongst the locals for their takeout food. I recommend you try the spicy fried rice or the pad thai lunch specials, as most of the NYU students appreciate. This is Oat Meals, the first oatmeal bar I've ever been to. I'm not even sure if there are others. You pick your size, baby, mama, or papa bear. Then you pick your toppings. Toppings include just about anything you can imagine. Check out their website for some oatmeal ideas you could easily do at home. Playground of the Americas. In 1925, the city acquired this property from the Department of Transportation. The parcel eventually fell into the jurisdiction of the Parks Department. The park remained unnamed until 1998 when the Parks Department designated it Houston Plaza. However, in 2000, it was renamed Playground of the Americas after the street it's located on, Avenue of the Americas, aka 6th Street. This is the Olive Tree Cafe and Bar and the Comedy Cellar. The Olive Tree Cafe is upstairs or street level for those wanting a bite before or after the show. The Comedy Cellar is located, well, in the cellar. These three popular village clubs are within calling distance from one another. The Village Underground is right around the street from the Comedy Cellar. Same owner, two different locations. The Fat Black Pussycat has a happy hour, some dancing and karaoke, some good times. Three Sheet Saloon is a popular bar that donates some of its profits to charitable organizations. They're always open for donation suggestions, and it makes me want to order another round. Those of you who know me know my love of pizza. One of my favorite go-to places is Two Boots Pizza, and this one happens to be in the village. It's a good slice, thin crust, and very flavorful. Today I had the Cleopatra Jones, which has sweet Italian sausage, roasted peppers, onions, and fresh mozzarella. A little shake of Parmesan cheese at the table never hurts either. Next time I'm going to try their po' boy sandwich. I'm a sucker for anything pizza or Cajun. Perhaps this is why I like this place so much. The name Two Boots comes from the shapes of Italy and Louisiana, both shaped like boots, one left and one right. This is Babo, a restaurant that was opened in 1998 by Mario Batali and Joe Bastianic. Babo was all about authentic Italian cuisine. Soon after opening, the restaurant received a glowing three-star review from the New York Times. It also received the James Beard Foundation's Best New Restaurant Award. Besides its critical acclaim, Babo was said to have the most extensive and intelligent wine collections in New York City. Times have changed, however, and as most people know, since the opening of the restaurant, Mario Batali has been accused of allegedly sexual harassment and the other owner, Joe Bastianich, of allegedly just looking the other way. Babo was now referred to by New Yorkers as Limbo, which remains the fate of this restaurant's future. Here we have the old Village Gate sign, a historic jazz club located on the corner of Thompson and Bleecker Streets. The club opened in 1958, and some notable performers include John Coltrane, Billie Holiday, Duke Ellington, Dizzy Gillespie, Dave Brubeck, and Miles Davis. Aretha Franklin made her first New York City appearance here. 
The club has since been closed since 1993, but the original sign lives on above what is now a CVS pharmacy. If you're in the mood for a sandwich, Lenny's is a good bet. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, tons of choices, several locations around the city. This one is located in Sandwich, oops, I mean Greenwich Village. Check out the menu for some ideas you can try out at home. Sometimes I'll whip out my camera and take a picture and forget why I took it days later. I'm not sure exactly where this is. It's definitely somewhere in the village, close to the West Village. As I studied the photo, my eye was drawn to the second story apartment with the window boxes and trees. It looks like a great place with awesome views as you look out. Thunder Jackson is your typical burger and beer joint. However, what got my attention was the pull down gate art. I've seen these race cars elsewhere on pull down gates around the city, including Midtown and Downtown. This artist definitely gets around. Village Music World right off of NYU's campus. Look closely and you'll see a shopkeeper enjoying a beautiful afternoon. This is Siggy's in Greenwich Village, best described as organic comfort food. Their philosophy is, good food plays a vital and significant role in our lives, promoting physical and emotional well-being. That sounds all well and good, but I just don't get the alien from another world theme. Peanut Butter and Company. Someday I'm going to open a cafe in the village that sells peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for $7.25. Oh wait, it's already been done. Just a picture of a 14 streets home's beautifully Christmas decorated exterior in the village. Melt Craft is a Greenwich Village favorite. As many of you know, I like pizza. I also like grilled cheese sandwiches. And if you think about it, pizza and grilled cheese is the same concept. Crust, cheese, and toppings. Try the Melter Skelter, three different cheeses, pickled green tomatoes, jalapenos, barbecued potato chips, and watercrest. Or check out the Brielli, brie cheese, cranberry chutney, caramelized onions, and toasted pine nuts. This joint brings grilled cheeses to a whole new level. Artful Posters is located on Bleecker Street. Lots and lots of posters. These are good quality, great subject prints, not the stuff you find in the back of record stores or Spencer's. They'll also mount and frame your print if you'd like. This is Francois Payard Bakery. It's an authentic Parisian bakery with world-class pastries, tarts, cakes, and cookies. Their signature item is a Parisian macaroon, which is very colorful and immediately identifiable by native city dwellers. They also have a great selection of artesian breads, hot and cold drinks as well, and the prices aren't bad either. They're located right on Houston Street, which separates the village from Soho. The Salvation Army operates out of this building in Greenwich Village. It looks like all those coins and dollar bills add up. It's a beautiful building with a grand entrance. This is Church of the Village. It's a progressive Methodist church that considers itself open-minded and not bound by tradition. Here we have Pratt Institute. Pratt is one of the leading art, design, and architecture schools in the United States. They have two campuses, one in Brooklyn and this one on West 14th Street in the village. Finally, we have a shot looking north from a Greenwich Village street. That's the Chrysler Building, one of my favorites, in Midtown in the center in the background. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and click on the little bell in the corner so you can be notified of new videos coming out.